Bella must live, die, and know. Probably on. Yeah. We must and speaking of we need to I need to grab one more one more blue questling. One more blue quest and I will if I unless I've said it before I'll probably will say it again. I will do a a huge backtracking to do if there's ever a point of getting to the um uh trial which it might be for a long while So apparently, the Hermes was so. Even though we have the information we needed, we learned that Meteon, Meteon, is in fact the reason why the event of the first. Why of the final days exist. And is also given to the circumstances, the uh animus is the flicker of incorporeal energies, or rather incorporate ether. So that no one else could really know about what happened. It's time to leave. Pretty soon. Finad. So, it is within. The portal that brought you hither, and will take you home. Yes, and this is where we part ways. May you and yours emerge triumphant. Make use of the knowledge you have gained, that your days in Elpis and our friend's sacrifice be not in vain. With Meteon free to pursue her designs, it is only a matter of time until the final days are upon us. We must be ready. From fortifying our defenses to securing our escape, there is much to be done. In spite of this, we cannot allow the report that set this calamity in motion to become common knowledge. Were the masses to learn the fates of the other stars, I fear the situation would spiral out of our control. Mm hmm I must carefully consider who can be trusted and bring them into the fold. Ordinarily, I wouldn't hesitate to call upon the Fourteen. However, it was the desire for a fair determination that drove Hermes to attempt to erase our memories. And were he made aware of his actions, there is no telling whether he would remain a friend or become a foe. I mean... Alternately, we might try to alienate him from the Convocation. Yet in doing so, we would deprive ourselves of a brilliant mind, who would be invaluable in the crises to come. 
quite the dilemma. Which is why I must work independently of the Convocation. Yeah. Regardless of how we proceed, if we are to permanently avert the final days, we must be equal to Hermes's challenge. We must prove that mankind is worthy to exist. And this hinges, I think, on how we confront the all-consuming despair that accompanies a senseless and seemingly inevitable end. Bewildered and divided, we would perish like the peoples of those celestial ruins. We could not hope to survive the final days, much less take the battle to Meteon at her nest. We must find a way to defeat despair, to unite and prepare as many as possible for the struggle ahead. Mm -hmm. Heavy will weigh the burden of guiding this legion of souls. Yeah. Yet I have faith in mankind's potential. As long as he believes in himself, there is naught he cannot achieve. So I will not give up on him. On us. You may find your world to be very different. Or perhaps the erasure of our friend's memories has sown the seeds of a conjunction between us. We cannot know until the moment is at hand. So shall I strive to do my best, taking naught for granted as I walk my path. And I pray you walk with me to the end. As you move forward, so too will I. As will all, resolved to fight for the morrow. And when mankind has found the strength to stand against despair, we shall silence the song of oblivion. She who sings it will learn our journey is far from over. This I promise. <gasps> Fare you well, my light of the future, till we meet again. Now I return to the first. From this day forth, I shall strive to bring honor to the seat of Fandana. Heading back to the source. Oh. Just as a just as in the anticipation. Even now, I remember standing there, locked in a moment where the sky is aflame. Where stars fall as tears, 
and screams darken the seas. Where resignation rots the trees. Where terror twists magics into abominations. Such is the lament of they who have gone before. Oh, guys. The song of they who tried and failed to create a better world. The song of the end. which hides at the edge of the universe is no longer hope's creation. It is hopelessness incarnate. That day, mankind saw half of its number sacrificed to bring forth Zodiac. Covering the star in a shroud of ether, we forestalled the final days. Samidion. So She's the singer. Samidion so is the responsible for the final days. Bringing creatures to. Yet the cries echoed still. We wept for innocence lost, wailed for death inevitable. A reality too terrible to bear. And for too many who sought comfort in gilded memories of joyful days and tranquil nights. <sighs> First, this is all wrong. Why must we suffer so? It needn't be like this. No, there must be a way to restore things to the way they were. To reclaim the perfect paradise we once had. No, my friends. Suffering exists. And we cannot pretend otherwise. No civilization, however great, could eliminate it. If we would live, we must accept it as our constant companion. Let us not seek to forget this tragedy. Let us carry it in our hearts that we may grow stronger and know true happiness. We can't accept it. We won't accept it. It will be ours again. A world free of sorrow. No, it will not. For there has ever been sorrow. Mankind was but spared its biting sting for a time. So please, open your eyes to try and reclaim those lives we lost by sacrificing yet more isn't wisdom, it is weakness. No paradise is without its shadows. If we cannot accept this truth and learn from our pain, then our plight shall be repeated. Zodiac, God born of our boundless faith, we bid you hear our prayer. Accept this offering of lives and deliver unto us 
the lives we once had. Deliver unto us the days of old. The days when the star was a font of love, and we knew naught but bliss. She knew. You would destroy it? Our beautiful world? Lands that stretched on forever. Skies one could drown in. The heartbeat of nature, silent yet strong. And amidst it all, a people. Beacons of light and life. Laughter that warmed my heart like naught else before. They are my meaning and my purpose. My love. In spite of, or perhaps because of this, I choose to believe in mankind's potential in his ability to find a way forward. So let there be no way back. From that temptation, I sunder us. No more shall man have wings to bear him to paradise. Henceforth, he shall walk. So she became answers. All is excruciating pain. I breathe fire and torment. I birth a world of suffering to mire and plague. In one fleeting moment, lives come and go, ever moving towards the unknown. And in that fleeting moment, they cry for the answer to the question. Why, given life, are they meant to suffer, to die? Oh, gods. As fragmented, imperfect beings, yours is a never-ending quest. Oh. A quest to find your purpose, knowing your end is assured. Find the strength to continue when all strength has left you. To find joy even as darkness descends. And amidst deepest despair, light 
everlasting. Conjunction has begun to form, an intertwining of your time and mine. When you truly understand what is at stake, and your journey has prepared you to surmount the insurmountable, then shall I honor the promise made in another time, another age. Is he gone? He is gone. Okay. Carry our song as the heavens burn. <sighs> That's so long.
taking turn for the worst. Runners and Farag to contain the spirit of Lesmes, but it's a losing battle. All over. Locust animals is one of the worst effects. Any of the sixes it doesn't need. Still drops a bucket at best. But to no avail. Close eye on the forum. And we have seen no sign of it thus far. I suspect it's still incomplete. The force of unto the people of of, of Razat Han. To accept the forms of invitation. And that's where things get a little strange. Instead of the mysterious ship. Oh. Traveled to Garwal not long ago. Hardly safest place to begin with, and now. Had come to Garwal. The panic broke out, and the communications were severed. It spread to the capital. So it spread... further out than I thought. Precaution. Since the final days are has been nothing but So Garnworld has been nothing but well, disastered. More or less the same. Yeah, as Yeah, as I as I suspected it would happen. And not a moment to own. A whole set of new cutscenes. As the as the heavens burn. So Meteon is So Meteon is the responsible. But also the cause of the final days as well. It's the 
Diamond is, is the cause of the effect. That's the final days. No. 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 We were promised an escape. Not the same. No. We fled. No. I shall not meet my final days here in this blasted waste. Calm yourselves. Your panic is our greatest enemy. Come, we must build a line of defense. How? Leave the fighting to us, Father. You must lead the people to safety. I can handle this pair. You shall tend to the refugees. Let us be about it. <laughs> As you wish, my little lord. Oh boy, this is gonna be interesting. Alright, I'm gonna... Hey, right, time to play healer. Command the beast's attention. See to the wounded. Help is at hand. Leave it to me. Those who can stand, come with me! You're safe now. Easy now. Deep breaths. Worry not for the refugees, but for yourself.
hot, but not hot enough! Jeez, a wheeze. and the army. So, you've recovered then? In time enough to be of aid, but once. We can speak of it more later. For now, we must fight! To repay your salvation in kind, or with better! For Garlemald has her pride! Of that I've no doubt. Might be in order. Ah, oh, sod that. You know who would never abandon these people to their fate. To be devoured by their former friends. That'd be beyond cruel. These beasts must fall here and now. Well then, I'd say it's high time we threw caution to the winds. So long as you spare me the heroic sacrifices. Now, let's go! All right. not
Schwein. Today. None to worry about. The air crackles with energy. Find cover! Say, turnabout's fair play. On guard. Thank you for saving our lives once again. Yeah. I remember you, from Purusha. You helped us there too, didn't you? Ah, oh, you're from Palakar Stand. I'm glad you're still in one piece. Oh, you will be, once I see to that injury of yours. Get out of here, quickly! I won't lose them, not a one. This will be a brighter future. I won't let a madman's apocalypse ruin everything we fought to achieve. Get it together, Alizé. 
You're embarrassing yourself. And in front of father, no less. You might never measure up to our champion. But we ask too much of her as it is. You mustn't let our sword in the darkness fight alone. In a hand. You have done well in my absence. I can look after myself, you know. Everything's in order, I trust. I've had enough of this rabble. Come on! Let's do this. For the ages. For sure. Just the beginning. I had a feeling I'd find you here. This should be the last of the worst troublemakers. With me! Give the healing to me. Yeah. 
I'm in your debt. Say no more. There we go. Woo! Woo! Woo. We made it. You must board without delay. The ship will depart ere long. Your offer to host us in Charlian is most appreciated. But will the final days not soon fall upon it as well? Your hesitation is not unwarranted. The Satrap entrusted me with your lives, yet I have failed your comrades. Nor are you wrong to fear that this corruption will continue to spread. I cannot promise you complete safety, even in my homeland. What I can promise is that I will do all in my power to protect you. That power is not inconsiderable. Even now, my countrymen are preparing the vessel that will deliver us to a sanctuary on the moon. Join us on our journey there, and beyond to new horizons. Come to old Charlian, please. You know, it's been like a few days. I mean, it's been like days or even months since I've been gone. We would be fools to refuse such a generous offer made in earnest. It seems they've a new destination. The people of Radzat Han have known too much suffering. The march to Garlemald will only bring them more, short though it may be. I quite agree. Fortunately, they have you to look after them. Yes. Well. <laughs> His raised eyebrow. Behind you! Just there! Hey, ever. Hello? Xenos! Yo! Hi! Xenos! Here! What do you know? 
Well, that shadow of the doubt. Hurry to the airship. I was wondering he'll be here. Where you have been? Since after you left him from the moon. Why have you come? A heretofore unseen beast. Twas ripe for the slayer. Zenos Beator Gallus. Poor sport of ass. Unfit to temper my blade. Oh, for the love of God. You cannot still be on about a rematch. That is and has ever been my sole concern. Ah, I see. You, on the other hand, are fixated on a different quarry. Your passion pales before mine, yet neither hate nor despair seems sufficient to recapture your misdirected bloodlust. So, I hone my blade, and I wait. As you should. That's it. That's all you care about. Garlemald is in ruins. Our homeland, the nation you rule, is as good as gone. Along with so many of its people. Not just soldiers like us. Not only those who fought and killed for power and duty. Innocent civilians. <sighs> Murdered by their own flesh and blood. Lost and confused as they breathed their last. While we who survived with our lives and minds intact were left to freeze to death. The Eorzeans tell me all this was your doing. You slaughtered your countrymen. You did. For what? For nothing in the end. So much wasted effort. For nothing. You. For your own sake, you must, you must control your anger. Bless you. Serve no one should it consume you and see you transformed. <laughs> well? Would you be happier had I a good... Huh? What? If my motives met with your approval, would you no longer resent the outcome? If so, then perhaps a beast's skin would suit you better. Duty, honor, morality. All constructs of convenience were Surely the war taught you how easily power becomes the tool of the self-righteous. Huh. How the people's justice was merely a means to their ends. Yet you would ask me why. Ask any creature of this star and those above for answers, and they will tell you what suits their fancy. They would be right to do so. What meaning there is to be found in the petty vicissitudes of your existence must be gleaned by you and you alone. <sighs> 
Should you seek it in battle in the fruitless pursuit of my demise, then come. Assume your rightful place as a notch on my blade. You are a blight on the Garlean race. There would be no more satisfying way to expunge it than by beating you to death. But I will not be party to another tragedy. I refuse to lose anyone else because of you. So go. Go! And may we never suffer your madness again! Xenos! Hmm. Perhaps you found meaning in living this way. I cannot deny you found strength. Yet if you only pursue your hedonistic pleasures and pay no heed to the plight of others, then no one will give you the time of day. You will never get what you want, not even the battle you pine for so dearly. You'll be alone for an eternity, and you'll deserve every agonizing second of it. I think he remembers that. I think he will remember it that well. He might as well consider it. Ready to depart. The refugee ships will be leaving shortly, but I've asked mine to remain for the time being. Why? There's room enough for you to join me on it, if you wish. <sighs> Do contain your surprise. I needn't agree with the science methods or intentions to acknowledge that their deeds are deserving of gratitude. We appreciate the offer, but might I ask why you're delaying your departure? I presume it is not solely for our benefit. I must visit Garlemald ere we return to Charlian. Having caused such an uproar, it is only meet that I explain myself to the Ilzabad contingent. to accompany you then. We should be glad to facilitate, given our familiarity with all concerned. If you would like to join as well, Eulus, we can speak of recent events on the way. You'll be off to your seat on the forum next. <laughs> that caught the surprise. <laughs> oh, he's thinking about it. He's thinking about it.
Yeah. I'm back. It's been... It's been a while, I'll say. No major injuries, then. Good. Mm -hmm. I briefed the recovered soldiers and sent them on their way as quickly as I could, but nevertheless feared they would not make it in time. The additional support was invaluable. Your men saved more than a few lives. Though not all, I regret to say. I take it that I am addressing Lucia Junius. I am the Forum's envoy, Fortuno Leveilleur. And you are owed an explanation for these most dire developments. Another trial wrought by the final days. I was beginning to suspect as much. You doubtless feel some consternation having been forced to abandon your original plan. But trust me when I say you were right to send the refugees elsewhere. Beasts have been sighted within the capital. Perhaps it was a stroke of grim fortune that the population was decimated beforehand as they've yet to appear in any great number, but in time. In any case, Maxima leads the remainder of the contingent in an effort to cull the creatures and evacuate the populace as we speak. Once the airships are taken to the skies, I pray your men can be persuaded to join him. You'll permit us to retain our weapons? I wouldn't have sent you after the Scions where I expecting you to stab them in the back. <laughs> and I, for one, would not consider past transgressions more relevant than future contributions. Regardless of the circumstances that saw us at odds before, we need men of courage now, more than ever. God. <laughs> His face. I just nod at him. <laughs> we swore to defend Garlemald, and so we shall. It seems you have everything under control. You will excuse me then, for mine own duties await. A moment, Master Fortuno. You did desire to express your appreciation for services rendered, did you not? I did. Though if you intend to again ask that Charlian alter its course, you will find my gratitude insufficient. Tis nothing so onerous. I wish to hear the details of this grand endeavor of yours. <laughs> Do you swear to listen and to learn, and not to embark upon some scheme to impede us? I swear. <laughs> Any other, I would doubt. But you, I trust to keep your word. For not once have you broken it. Very well. I will request that the Forum make you privy to our plans. You may await our summons at the Baldessian Annex, assuming the decision is in your favor. Does that suffice? It 
does. You have my thanks. Hey, go Alvin now. You can regale us with tales of your most recent sojourn to the first one. Mm-hmm. Did you hear something just now? Oh, gods. What is she doing here? Hello? What the? Dawn may vanish, even the darkest night. Hi, Orange Eye. The climb bring warmth and comfort. <laughs> Welcome back, Orange. It is heartening to see such an assembly upon my return. I thought often of you whilst I looked down upon our star's brilliance from the moon above. And as you can tell. Yes, but what are you doing here? I dressed like that. Aren't you cold? Verily. I fear for my health should I proceed to expound upon our purpose ere I procure more suitable garments. Forgive me, but are they... Thy distant collaborators, indeed. Hey, old fellow, well met. You'd be a member of the forum, would you? It's an honor and a pleasure to meet you at last. I'm Livingway, Hydlin's right paw. 
that last bit is very important. As am I, if I may humbly say so myself. <laughs> I uh, bid you welcome to our star, Living Way. On behalf of the Forum, I thank you for traveling such a distance to meet us. <laughs> as you have surmised, preparations for the Exodus have not proceeded as smoothly as we had hoped. I should be happy to personally escort you to our headquarters in Charlia, where you may advise us as you deem fit. It was with reluctance that I set aside the great work of readying the moon for habitation. Be assured that I did so only after the Loperits made plain their earnest desire to come hither, and I myself felt a growing certainty that their contributions here would prove invaluable. For sure. It is trite, perhaps, but I followed my heart. Good to have the view back. <laughs> For a time, at least. Nevertheless, twas worth the journey to find present company well. Will thou attend us at the forum and lend thine own wisdom? Yeah, I have. If that's all quite settled, can we start moving before Urianger catches his death? Even I'm freezing up here. How are you still freezing? Oh, I dare say you'll warm up quickly once you're aboard the airship. Sat shoulder to shoulder with our fur-covered friends. <laughs> Pudding. Pudding way. Oh, well, this is rather interesting so far. <laughs> Cussing one after cutscene. Yeah, um, so speaking about that. Uh, you may be surprised what I just found in in a world in a place that is completely uh well somewhere to the very extent of it at least. Same. Not a complaint, Orianji, but I was expecting to see you quite so soon. No word I see. Suddenly, the effort our beloved stars demise. And see new knowledge that may aid us in our ongoing efforts. But your findings must be a greater interest, so I'd rather hear them first. Why did, uh, relations did Highland's Ellipsy Flower lead? Sick. 
So this diamond is, is what drives the final days. If and Akistan are the one and the same, it's all but proves Noda's theory. What entity or sheer force in motion to channel this vast, dormant reservoir and the raging river, its power might surpass that if the even that of either. But the stars repeated Eight of either said entity needed to be outside the influence to affect between the mute blade and the diamonds of a great expense. Maiton. Or rather the sorrow, suffering, fall, and civilization she has been hoarding for a millennia. Untold anguish, fear, and hatred drawn in every corner in the universe. All for a single purpose. The destruction of Aetheris. Then our foe is no, no longer some unknowable calamity. We have but one aim. To meet Meteon. You make it sound so simple, but you're not wrong. Fangish Meteon, and we deliver the world from the final days. But to an even attempt, there are two conditions. First, we must determine her location. But for Meteon's game, an enchantment was placed upon her by Fanat, the woman who would become Heindelin. In deep location, the Topro magics are not entirely understood. So we can also that our Heindelin and in that the Divina you met and Lepis are one and the same. Nevertheless, due to her intuitive qualities of an all powerful being, I wager the Heidelin possesses the knowledge we seek. Whether she was shared that knowledge with us, however, remains to be seen. After all, she tended us to free Aetheris, not, not to stay. Do you suppose she abandoned her pursuit at Minuton? Well, well, she tried to pursue her, but she did put a charm on her. So they, mm, no, but still out there. Ah, uh, although that luck of trying the Highlands part. Sure, that's why she used me to contemplate for her will. Provided clues such as the Leipzig flower. I believe she has been waiting. For my guys to answer to Hermes' question. Mm hmm. And what's the second condition? We must find the means to reach Meteon. Naturally, our chosen method would depend upon wherever so she has made our nest. The communal hindling must by necessity come first. Do you must enjoy having a look at investigation to the ethereal sea? Sadly not. Although we did list of how the Orphel and Echo blessed allies, we couldn't detect so much as a whisper behind one, even in front of within an anti tower. When us tutorial has appeared in the, in that in the years since abandoning it, the foreign has found some other methods of receiving instructions from Heidelin. So, it would be likely most some foreign apparatus for observing Ethereal Sea built closer to home. Rosta then
I feel like I need to cut it into parts of the video. I feel like I need to make some, uh, editing. Or as to, I need to cut, like, parts. Because it'll be a lot easier that way. So they would have an issue where it's just constant every time. If we get to trial, to the next trial, I mean. Hey, where do we get to trial? I, what I mean, the next trial, it will probably mean, uh, it probably means something. We'll have to see. So let's hope this works out. There is a matter I wish to raise with you before we enter. We are here to listen and to learn. But if the forum's plans are more or less what I expect, then I should like to make a proposal that will serve our ends. By your leave, of course. I don't see why not. Your words and wits have gotten us this far. Agreed. I will present our queries so that you may consider the most advantageous way to advance your proposal without distraction. Thank you, everyone. If I may have your attention, the ad hoc session will now commence. The purpose of today's assembly is to brief the Scions of the Seventh Dawn, at their request, on the Great Exodus. You may enter. On behalf of the Forum, I commend your heroic actions on the Magna Glacies. We shall not soon forget your service to us, and the people of Rads of Harm. The Sartre, whom we have informed of the refugees' new arrangements, sings your praises as well. As an expression of our gratitude, we will endeavor to answer your questions as fully and openly as we are able. Then let us begin. First, it is the Forum's objective to ferry the life and knowledge of this star to the Moon. Am I correct? You are. It is for this purpose that Charlian has labored these many long years. We have collected biological samples and scientific records from across the star. When the time comes, 
They will be moved from their places in Labyrinthos and Numenon and conveyed to safety. Once that critical task has been accomplished, we will begin transporting the Charlian citizenry, which has been categorized into groups. The earliest arrivals are to ensure hospitable environs for those who come after. Following our people, we will send those of other nations in turn, beginning with our allies. Radzat Harm was foremost among these, but since the final days have already come to Thavnir, we saw fit to include the refugees with earlier groupings. An ambitious plan. You have accounted for the safety of all nations and tribes then? As many as we can. And how, pray tell, do you decide who to leave behind? To journey beyond the sky is an unprecedented and immeasurably difficult endeavor. Introducing sources of inevitable conflict would condemn all to certain death. Hmm. Questions as to the validity of that approach aside. Are your plans proceeding apace? We're under the impression that your primary means of celestial transportation is incomplete. If only in that it does not meet our optimal parameters, that is correct. This arc, as some have taken to calling it, is fully operational and could be launched even today. However, the final days have progressed more quickly than we anticipated. At present, the ship is incapable of attaining speeds sufficient to meet our evacuation targets. Should we put the vessel into service, as it is now, we will be unable to travel to the moon and back quickly enough to complete the necessary number of trips. Precious lives and knowledge will be lost. Seven hills. Is there anything to be done? The ether burner, the primary means of propulsion once the craft is in the space between stars, is undergoing testing to determine whether it can be made more efficient. Though cargo is being loaded for the initial phase of the exodus, we are prepared to continue our experimentation up to the day before launch, should it prove necessary. What if the Scions were to solve your problem? We shall help devise a means to improve the ether burner's efficiency on two conditions. If we succeed, you must allow us to meet with Hydaelyn. It was simple enough to deduce. You have a Concord, and so you would never have abandoned the Anti-Tower had you no other means of communication. One far more convenient, I suspect. The second condition, also to be met upon our success, is that we be permitted to propose another use for your Ark. We would be at liberty to refuse this proposal. Of course, if we cannot prove its merit to the 99 here, who are we to stake on it the lives of all peoples of this star? Master Alfido. <laughs> oh, we couldn't have asked for a finer plan. 
allow us to solve this complex engineering problem of which we were entirely unaware until moments ago. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> the satire writes itself. <laughs> My God. <laughs> Yet, what field has not benefited from a change in perspective? When we are at wit's end, what we need is not the same dry theories recited ad nauseum, but fresh inspiration. I, for one, have faith in my erstwhile students to provide it, and I find their terms to be perfectly acceptable. Order! Order! We have no time to waste on debate. I call a vote. All in favor of agreeing to the Scion's terms, Oh. Seventy one oh. in favor, twenty eight against. The eyes have it. Damn. For Chanel, as the architect of this project, you are the best candidate to show them its current state. And bear in mind. Regardless of your personal misgivings, this is the will of the fall. Very well. Fantastic. To a close, return to your tasks with urgency. The final days wait for none. Wow, a solid plan. That's actually... Holy moly! That actually happened. That's huge! That was something entirely different. Mm -hmm. Honestly, this is crazy. We'll have to see then. We'll have to see. <sighs> we'll have to see.